Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's Zoom webinar. We're part of our continuing Corona coverage by the Times Free Press, and I'm Dave Flessner, the business editor, along with Allison Collins, our digital engagement editor, inviting you to uh, share your questions and answers as we talk to three key business leaders today about the way in which we're beginning to reopen our economy, moving forward in this COVID-19 normal or abnormal era that we're now entering. Um, certainly this has been a great challenge to our fis fiscal health, physical health, but also our fiscal health as a community. And as we move forward now after six weeks of having a lot of restaurants, stores, non-essential services shut down, we begin now to reopen our economy in a gradual way. We're delighted to have three key business leaders to talk about ways in which they see us moving forward, ways in which they're organizations and businesses are, are helping that to happen. We're delighted to have uh, Christy Gillenwater, the president and CEO of the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce, um, a chamber involved in so many activities in terms of small and big businesses, the incubator, training opportunities, networking, recruiting, and, and promotion of our community. Just this week, Site Selection Magazine selected the Chattanooga Chamber's Economic Development Initiative as, as one of the top 20 in the country. We certainly entered into this 2020 year, the strong, robust economy that changed a bit in March. And we want to talk about ways we can now move forward, as well as we're delighted to have Barry White, the president and CEO of Chattanooga Tourism Company, formerly the Chattanooga Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Barry's group has sort of been at the forefront of the challenges of how we stay at home and stay apart while still trying to promote and move forward as a travel industry. Delighted to have Barry with us. And as well, we have Jay Dale, the market president for First Horizon Bank. First Horizon, the biggest bank in Chattanooga and in Tennessee. Jay's been certainly a key part of the credit challenges and for consumers and for businesses and in the efforts to try to provide credit and the Paycheck Protection Program and as we move forward in this, in this new era, trying to reopen the economy. So thank you all very much for, for joining us today. We'll have each of our participants give a little bit of an introduction about how they see the economy moving forward and the steps and programs and some of the initiatives that their respective groups are taking. And during that time, we invite you to submit any questions you might wanna have of our panelists. And Allison Collins, our digital engagement editor, will explain a little bit how you might be able to share those Q and A's if you'd like. Yeah, so if you have a question, please type it in the Q&A box and I will try and go through and moderate those and ask it of our panelists. Um, please just keep in mind what their roles are um, and um, ask questions that um, they will be able to answer or that they can provide their expertise on. Thank you, Allison. So, we, well, let's begin with uh, Christy Gillenwater, the CEO of the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce, which has been involved so much in so many initiatives in our business community and it gathered some information about the uh, where we're at and where we're moving forward. Christy, how do we move forward? What are some of the steps that the Chamber is doing to, pr to promote the community? All right, well, thanks so much, Dave, for having us and Allison as well for pulling this together. And I have to say, we've just been so impressed with the Times Free Press and the way you all have pivoted, uh, providing content on the coronavirus for free to constituents in our region. So thank you and thank you for inviting all of us today and to uh, both Barry and Jay for their partnership and the way they're both boldly leading their organizations. Um, I'd like to say on behalf of the business community, uh, it has been nothing short of uh, the most daunting times I think any of us have ever faced. And so, um, you know, it's with that, with a heavy heart, um, I'd like to, you know, share some thoughts with you today, but I, I will, must, I should say, underscore the amazing partnerships that we've seen uh, both strengthen and come to light out of this challenging time. Um, you know, it's so impressive to see how the nonprofit community, for-profit community, government uh, have all worked together to really try to transform these challenging times. So. You'll see on our first slide here, um, we've hosted a lot of live calls, much like um, Times Free Press, the CVB and others. We've ha hosted about 23 uh, live calls. We've had um, over 14,000 views on those. We've done a lot of member outreach. I think now we're pushing almost 2,000 contacts to our members. 
some of those lasting an hour, you know, talking to businesses about the challenges that they're facing and really um, just trying to take, take um, notice and help, help them navigate these most challenging times. We've also worked hard to um, look at PPE connections. And so uh, Steve Hyatt on our team has worked with some local manufacturers who have started manufacturing PPEs. We've been connecting those with the healthcare community. Uh, now we're looking more broadly in the community how to work with distribution channels that already exist to make sure companies here locally, uh, small businesses here locally who want to access uh, PPE supplies feel like they have access to what they need to reopen their business. And on the next slide, you'll see some of the uh, subjects in terms of uh, topics that we have covered on our live webinars. And by the way, I'd encourage everyone to check out chattanoogachamber.com. We pivoted our homepage to be uh, very focused on what businesses need. And uh, again, you can download these live webinars from that space, a lot of great content for businesses. Um, so again, a variety of updates to, you know, how to, to apply for PPP funding, to um, thinking about how to staff your business going forward, to, you know, virtual office best practices. So again, all of those webinars can be viewed there. Um, moving on to our impact on business. So we conducted a survey of businesses, not only via those 1,300 pushing 2,000 now calls, but also we had uh, uh, a number of our members, over 250, respond to this economic impact survey. And you'll see here, uh, very few percentage-wise have seen an increase in revenue, which I don't think it's surprising to any of our viewers today. Um, the decrease in revenue is substantive, um, at least again at the time we asked these questions. And this was really as of, I think April 27th, we cut off this survey and it's our team's intention to go back and reissue this survey here in a couple weeks. So we really wanted to get at what we thought was probably the bottom of the curve in terms of the local economy. And then uh, again, as we hope things start to strengthen here, uh, start to see those new numbers. And then the next slide, you'll see um, again, some of the most helpful programs in terms of what businesses thought, um, enhanced unemployment, again, coming in at almost 9%, again, tied with small business debt relief, the economic injury disaster loans, and then on top, the Paycheck Protection Program. So again, the federal government and the stimulus and support that our uh, federal leaders have enabled for small business has really been critical. And then you'll see on the next slide, how long do you anticipate this will impact your business? And again, these are just some of the highlights from this economic impact survey. You know, some said, the majority said four to six months, uh, but you'll see even 28% thought that this could be up to seven to 12 months. And again, you'll see those who even thought beyond there uh, from an economic impact standpoint. Um, and then as we look at the next slide, what we've been thinking about and going forward, we knew these results would be difficult. Um, we knew that as we looked at them, we'd really want to think about how do we keep Chattanooga going? And kudos to the CBB, River City, and others who have put together some brilliant, brilliant ideas around shopping local. Um, this was our, our uh, focus on keeping it local. Again, Chattanooga to go during those last few weeks of shutdown, you know, really trying to remind people that a lot of businesses were still open and that you can get things to go. And that's not... point of um, retail, et cetera, to, you know, keeping your offices clean. There are companies you can go to at this point in time. And we're really switching that campaign uh, at this point in time to go to as the economy starts to reopen. We're taking that slowly as we encourage people to go to businesses. But as they reopen with, um, you know, state and federal guidelines um, at heart, uh, we want to encourage people to go to these businesses. That That's so important to shop local and keep your dollars local in these uh, critical times. And then on our last slide, you'll see we are launching uh, yet tomorrow or Friday, a small business hotline. Uh, and again, this is meant to be something where, you know, we have a lot of businesses we work 
it. Barry does, Jay does, but there are a lot of businesses in our community who don't have relationships with um, even the partners listed on this hotline slide. Uh, we want to open our arms up to them and feel like they can call on us for help and support as they think about reopening their doors, as they think about a new normal for a while and what that might look like, whether it's you know, marketing assistance to understanding where to garner PPE supplies to um, help with workman's comp issues um, to financial support uh, and financial projections and how they go about thinking about, again, this new normal. The small business hotline here at 423-206-2565 we think is going to be so important. And I want to, or to tell you too, it's underscored by EPB. EPB is our um, supporter on this in terms of providing this hotline and, and creating this support mechanism for us. And we thank all of our partners who are coming live on this hotline as well. So um, as we look forward, we are uh, very, bullish on Chattanooga can, in, in terms of how Chattanooga and Hamilton County can come out of this challenging times with COVID-19 compared to other communities. And I know, I, I'm assuming based on our questions that will follow, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about what recovery looks like and what our current thinking is. But as Dave mentioned at the front end, you know, we're very bullish about our economic development strategies, what we've uh, lined out this past year, what we're pivoting on uh, as we go forward. We're really excited about the opportunities that lie ahead, but at the same time, extremely cautious and careful about our small businesses and our companies um, are not faring very well right now. And we're very sensitive to that, wanting to support them as much as possible. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Christy. Great comments, appreciate it very much. And Turn next to, to Barry White, the CEO of the uh, Chattanooga Tourism Company, formerly the Chattanooga Convention and Visitors Bureau, who's changed his name and focus during during this COVID-19 crisis. And Barry, perhaps no industry has been hit as hard as the travel and hospitality industry. How, how do you move forward now and, and what initiatives are, is the tourism company taking now? Yeah, uh, thanks Dave. And and yeah, you've, you've hit it directly head on right there. And I'll, I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit about what we're, what we're facing as, a, as an industry here in Chattanooga. Um, I do wanna thank uh, Times Free Press and Dave, thank you for having, having us on today. We appreciate it and uh, consider it an honor to be here with my colleagues and Christy and Jay as well. So thank you and your team for making us, uh, making this available and, and having us with you. Um, so when we speak about the travel and tourism industry, uh, I just want to identify and kind of define what we're talking about. That it, it, It's a collection of several industry sectors, uh, including dining, retail, entertainment, lodging, and transportation. And so collectively, those, those sectors make up the travel and hospitality industry. And you just think about uh, you know, the, the obvious ones that people typically think about are, uh, you know, lodging, you know, hotels and, and short-term rentals and that types of thing, and then transportation. But a lot of our spending uh, from visitors takes place in our restaurants and our establishments and our retail shopping and, uh, and, and the entertainment and activities that they do while they're here. So those are all very, very important uh, to our community, as we'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, but overall in the country, just to give you some perspective, uh, travel and hospitality, hospitality in those sectors are expected to be, uh, represent those greatest loss collectively uh, throughout the country during this crisis. Uh, estimates right now are anywhere between 40 and 45% of the total economic loss will be in those five industry sectors. So we are, um, you know, we can, we, we feel it, we feel it locally. And, uh, and we start thinking about the, you know, we're gonna, we're starting to see some reopening of a few of those segments right now. And uh, we're learning our way and there's, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty and unknowns as we go down this path, but uh, excited to see some of the restaurants reopening and, and, uh, and retail establishments as well. We've been focusing, you know, since day one, uh, we really focused on, well, we stopped all of our advertising. The timing was, was horrible for us. It was right as we were getting into March, which is one of our best months of the year with uh, families traveling, traveling to Chattanooga for spring breaks. 
uh, from our, our target markets in Birmingham, Nashville, Atlanta, and, and so on. So we, ha we stopped all external marketing uh, tied to spring break as soon as, uh, as, soon as the, the virus broke and uh, just to save money. And, and we did, again, the last thing, uh, travel was not, uh, was not even possible at that time. So we focused all of our communications immediately in, in March uh, internally to our partners in those industries, uh, hotels and, and entertainment and the, the, what makes the culture and heritage uh, and, and the arts and, and those unique aspects that make Chattanooga special. We hosted daily discussions very similar to the Chamber of Commerce. We hosted discussions uh, daily uh, by industry sector and then and with our partners. Uh, we launched what is called um, Connect Chat, which was uh, which is a collection of virtual experiences. So people could it provided avenues for uh, some of our performers and artists and others to get on and um, and, and be paid, uh, but also to perform and let people know that we are still here and try to just keep Chattanooga out there, both with our residents and with potential visitors. Um, we. Also kind of looked at some, you know, just utilizing low cost and high, effic high efficiency marketing tactics. So a lot of uh, paid social and again, putting that the connect chat experiences up was just uh, inexpensive. But uh, one example I can say is uh, that we, one of the bands uh, that, that played for us, you know, was expecting to play in front of about 200 people at their paid gig before it was canceled. And when all was said and done, and they performed online for us and did their first online uh, performance, they had more than, uh, I think it was 30,000 uh, views and followers and, and raised more money than they would have made in you know, three or four gigs. So good, uh, just trying to get people out there and just making sure that they're seen. So now we're in a different place. Um, recovery has started. And, and again, in some of those sectors and but you know the recovery we're still inwardly focused and helping support our partners recovery starts with chattanoogans and this is our time to get re-engaged and to, to learn our community assets and and also to be top of mind with with visitors so you mentioned our new name we also have uh, done a lot of research over the past 12 months and, and and some branding and determining really what the heart and soul who the heart and soul of chattanooga what is that and what are what are we based on what's our foundation and came up with you know kind of four pillars uh from community assets natural assets and community attitude business attitude and we we are going we're rolling out some of our brand findings to our community starting this week and it's not where we're telling the story of how we researched our brand and what we created we're not we're not telling that story we're just going to show the community through a series of videos and others and we have some great partners uh, lined up to help push those out just to really build community pride uh, build awareness uh, uh, again keeping our chattanoogans top of mind showing that we're safe, they are travel, we have this, you know, we have the ability to, to come back from this because we are Chattanoogans. So um, it's a, a critical time and we're gonna be doing that for again, probably the next, uh, throughout, the, throughout the month of May at least, uh, before uh, we anticipate travel restrictions being lifted a little bit as, as long as everything goes well. So just very excited to, um, to see things starting to open back up and uh, again, we want nothing more than our small businesses, our retailers, and our restaurants to succeed. And there's a lot riding on this right now. We hope that everybody practices, uh, you know, engages in safe practices and that they're successful in opening safely and we can continue on uh, a forward path to recovery. Thanks, Barry. And finally, we want to hear from, from Jay Dale, the market president of First Horizon Bank. Uh, Jay's been involved, obviously, in, in a number of businesses trying to figure out new credit paths forward, as well as consumers as they look at a new economic environment, as well as the challenge and the millions of dollars, really, that have come through the Paycheck Protection Program. Jay, what's the economy looking like in, in the business conditions, and how do you move forward? What programs have you been initiating? 
Yeah, thanks, Dave. Good afternoon, everybody, and appreciate you putting this program together and the invitation. And um, and in behalf of all our First Horizon employees, we want to say our thoughts and prayers with all those impacted by this pandemic and COVID-19 and the Easter Easter tornadoes as well. So, you know, a lot of folks were impacted. I'll talk about kind of COVID-19 and the impact, and then the SBA PPP program. Um, on the COVID-19 side, so we had the safety of our employees and customers at the top of mind. Like a lot of branches and credit unions in town, March 23rd, we closed the lobby um, to buy appointment only. We really encouraged our customers to use other avenues, drive through ATM, online banking. We're an industry that fortunately has the ability to continue somewhat business as usual by utilizing technology. Um, and I do want to thank all of our bank employees who are providing such an important essential service. They've got health concerns going to the branch every day, but they know how important it is to our community to be there interacting with our, with our community and to our customers as well, who have been very understanding uh, and flexible with these changes. And we're actually looking at next week going back to some phased in approach of opening the lobbies back up, but really managing how many customers come in. You're used to seeing tape on the floor of keeping space at the tele line. And so we'll manage through how we create social distancing, but try to open back up a little bit. Here in kind of the main office, the non-retail side, pretty much everybody's working from home. We're monitoring kind of on a percent basis, how many are actually coming in the office. And it's not that many. And I suspect we'll do a similar thing over time. We'll phase that in and kind of monitor it by a percent and kind of scale up. But for the time being, we're continuing to encourage all our uh, employees to work from home. And then working with our community and our business customers, we did a lot of emergency financing, working capital lines, knowing they were going to be impacted. So that was kind of end of March, as well as offering uh, deferral of payments for three months to provide relief. So we did a lot of work there right before then the SBA PPP program came out and Congress passed that around the 27th. And as a taxpayer and citizen, I thought, wow, how novel. They're going to let the banks actually distribute that. We could do it faster. Uh, I, I was excited about it. Then we realized the scale and the undertaking that was going to take. And for those not familiar, the PPP program was designed to basically take your, your payroll for 12 months, take the monthly average times two and a half, and we would provide a loan to encourage small businesses to keep their folks employed, knowing they may be shut down. So the spirit of that is for those eight weeks, basically May 1st to June 30th, you'll keep your employees um, working and there'd be a loan forgiveness piece. So really providing some incentive to small businesses to to, to, to keep employment up in their communities. And so the 27th had passed, it went live on April 3rd. The night before Thursday night is when the final guidance came out. So we were preparing for a game where we didn't have the rules. The guidance was constantly changing and we're kind of trying to build a plane while we're in, while we're in the air and trying to land it. We had to do kind of a phased in approach. So it went live on a Friday, we actually uh, rolled it out on a Monday, the 6th, and then more broadly kind of on that following Thursday on a more automated process for our retail side. And then the money ran out the previous, th the, the next Thursday on the 16th. So it went really fast round one, but a lot of folks took advantage of it. We were pleased to help and our, our team works some long hours. I mean, basically for four or five weeks, all we've done has been doing SBA PPP, but but it's an honor, there's been nothing more rewarding in my career to help and see our team work two hours. I mean, work at two in the morning, four in the morning, talking to clients all hours of the night. Round two started last Monday, the Congress passed one of the 200, excuse me, another 310 billion for round two of PPP. And actually it's gone really well. The average loan amount's much lower. I think there was some scrutiny on very large loans of maybe public companies that have access for financing and it was not necessarily intended to be utilized in that way. So some of those folks are trying to paint it back. The average loan amount smaller. And as of last night, the Tennessee Bankers Association said 
that they've used 181 billion of the 310 billion. So as of right now, there's still a lot of room in the bucket. So I would encourage you, if you're a small business and you've not taken advantage of that, to reach out to your primary banker, and we're happy to help. And just to give you a feel for the scale, so we've got an SBA group started about two or three years ago, and we might have five users that access SBA's eTrans system, which is where you input your loans. And we did about 50 to 100 million a year in SBA financing. And what we ended up doing was using 400 users to access the retrain site, which was an archaic site that often broke down and timed down, and you would want to throw your computer across the room just trying to get one entered. It finally got going much better in round two, about day two or three last week. And we normally do about 10,000 loans in a year. We're actually going to do 12,500 loans in one month time. So basically a year's worth of loans in one month. And we're gonna do about 2.1 billion um, in PPP financing. So just a huge undertaking. Basically every bank employee, if you had a pulse, no matter what your job was, you somehow were involved with SBA PPP. And again, I can't thank our bank employees enough because everybody knew how meaningful it was to our community, to the businesses, and I'm just very proud of the team for the, all the hours they put in. And then lastly, our foundation, you know, we're only as strong as our community. And so we provided 130,000 in support across all different areas of the community for emergency COVID-19 relief, as well as to the American Red Cross for tornado relief, and also to Erlanger for the impact they've had with COVID-19. So our foundation has stepped up as well. And uh, just couldn't be more proud of the team and happy to support and I'll end my comments there and take questions. Thank you, Jay. And as we mentioned before, uh, we welcome any of your questions that you might want to submit. So if uh, you want to submit some of those, we have a couple of get started with and then for a minute, I'll talk, turn it over to Allison to handle some more. But, but there's been a number of personal finance studies that have indicated from LendingTree and Money Geek and a few others that Chattanooga may be hit even harder than a lot of communities. Um, one estimate we could have as many as 80,000 people displaced, 29% uh, unemployment, which would be three times what we even had in the Great Recession a decade ago, almost to the Great Depression levels, in part because some of the areas in which Chattanooga has had some success over the last generation in terms of building our downtown tourism industry and, and restaurants and retailing and entertainment conventions and all those industries are, as Barry mentioned, are some of the, those that will be hardest hit. So I wondered going forth, how do you think Chattanooga is positioned? Uh, one study indicated we may be the most fourth, fourth vulnerable of the 100 major cities in the U.S. for, for this COVID-19 economic downfall because of the unique nature of our complexion of, as, as, a, as a community in terms of the makeup of our, of our, of our economy. How, how's Chattanooga positioned and, and how should we as a community cushion these losses and move forward and how do we market ourselves and maybe throw that first to Christy but invite each each of you to respond to that. Sure Dave happy happy to respond to that. So what that what that um, does not take into account is the spirit of Chattanoogans and residents in Hamilton County and you look at how resilient our community is and that's where in my opening comments I said you know, compared to other cities, we feel that we are very well positioned. Some of that is based on our size, but more importantly, it is based on the um, fabric of our community and the way we collaborate and work together and just the spirit behind Chattanoogans is very so aptly stated earlier. So to us, that study misses who we are as Chattanoogans. We're resilient. We've, we've been doing this for 50 years. We've been overcoming challenges. Not like this one, don't get me wrong, not at all like this one, but we are resilient people. And so we feel that the study doesn't take that into account, first of all. Second of all, you know, we have, as you mentioned, site selections um, commentary around our amazing economic development strategy. And we have, we are blessed with such an amazing team at the chamber. They've pivoted, been so focused on this, but we are reimagining how we market our community, thinking through, um, you know, our strategies of the past and how we traject those out into the future. But I'll also say this is exactly why we need to double down on our efforts, not only at the chamber, but I also think at the CBB side of it around tourism. 
why we need to double down our efforts to market our community. Um, and these kinds of times, it's not the time to let off on the gas. It's, it's time to be full throttle. We think with our 10 gig um, internet service that EPB has graciously supplied our community with, we're in a very competitive position as it relates to uh, working from home, more flexible workspace, et cetera. Um, in our assets, we always talk about the beauty in our community will be attractive uh, to folks for decades to come. And so to us, we feel like, again, the spirit of who we are is missing from that. And again, not a time to let off the gas. We need to take those um, studies into account, um, but let it fuel our energy to move forward. Barry, you got a $1.1 billion tourism industry here. How do you move forward and market that? And as a rubber tire market, are we better positioned maybe than some that have a flying destination? Well, I'm gonna, yeah, I definitely wanna echo Christy's comments. I think, you know, first of all, Lending Tree, um, you know, I pr appreciated their uh, recognition of the value of the hospitality and travel business on our community. And I think it reinforces the message that we've been trying to get across a, a lot of times um, to everybody. I think we recognize it. Sometimes we don't recognize it to its fullest extent. So it is critically uh, viable to our local economy. And and um, it, it, what another thing, like, like Christy said, in addition to, you know, it's the spirit of this place. We recognize that. We saw that come through in some of the branding research that we conducted. We're taking that. We are like the chamber reimagining and, and repositioning uh, our, our messaging so that when it is safe uh, to begin travel and that we are confident in our community that we are, we are welcoming of others coming in and we know that it's, it's safe to have visitors coming in that we will be communicating and messaging in a way that is uh, sensitive to the current uh, landscape, uh, but also uh, leading with that, that local confidence and pride and uh, sincere welcoming um, and inclusion, inclusive uh, messaging that we know and, and how we live our lives here in Chattanooga. So um, I do say right now, uh, again, for the next, for the foreseeable future, probably for the next four weeks, which is the foreseeable future, maybe, maybe it's not. Um, but we're looking at, you know, right now still, there's some pretty low consumer confidence out there among visitors. We look at a lot of data and evaluate when, the, you know, we try to anticipate when, when is the timing right to start sending that message. But there's a lot of low consumer confidence out there just around safety and, and other things. That, so I don't think, you know, people are, really willing to travel right now, the state technically and non-essential travel is not open. Uh, that will happen sometime soon, but we need, still need to, you know, to, we're gonna have to watch what the consumers are, are thinking and feeling. But we are positioned, and Lending Tree did not take this into account either, we are positioned to respond and react and be very successful as we come out of this. The first thing people are gonna wanna do is probably gonna go see their visiting friends and relatives. And that market for us is already a very large segment of our, of our consumer, of our visitor of the pie, if you will. So uh, 35 or 40, 35 percent of our visitors do already travel to visit friends and family. We think that that will actually be a, a growth area for us as the travel restrictions begin to lift and people are going to want to travel to Chattanooga to visit their loved ones. Um, additionally, we look at the fly market versus the drive market. Uh, we are a very heavy drive market and people will be more willing to, we know and the research is indicating that people will be more willing to get in a car than they will be to get in an airplane. And so combined with uh, already a strong drive market, the VFR, the visiting friends and relatives, and uh, we think we're uniquely positioned to recover um, at, a, at a pretty quick pace because we're already set up that way uh, just geographically and um and in our current mix so we're we think that uh, we'll be very fortunate again we we sit in the middle of a, a couple of big big markets and we we feel confident that we'll be able to recover uh, fairly rapidly yeah you want to add anything to this yeah real quick I, i'd add that um i, I think the china economy was, was so strong coming into this that the patient was very healthy before we hit this pandemic so a lot of our business customers we're very strong, so that helps. The PPP financing, 
at our first horizon, probably by ourselves, we've probably deployed 200 million plus, and we're just one bank of the whole finance community. So that's going to have a big impact. Obviously, these are all somewhat temporary support over two or three months, but it's going to have a big impact. And then three, I would say, unlike the Great Recession, uh, the banking industry is very strong and very healthy coming into this. And our regulatory bodies have provided some some great temporary relief on how we classify loans. So banks are having to overreact on the balance sheet and classifications and um, and making uh, short-term decisions. So they're providing a lot of flexibility in how we look at those customers and business organizations that are going through this difficult time. So those are some important things to help kind of weather as things start ramping up again. All right. And we actually have a, a one question that was submitted before the webinar, and Michael actually elaborated on this in the Q&A box, but this question has more to do with PPE instead of PPP. So um, how are businesses working to ensure employee, employee and consumer safety concerns are addressed as we move forward and reopen in the economy while the virus is still in our midst? And Michael gave a few examples of you know, requiring the wearing of masks while in those businesses, having a bottle of hand sanitizer, having used and clean pens. I saw that at a business when I was out the other day. Um, you know, the ability to actually enforce some of these occupancy limits. So I'm just wondering what you all have seen, especially you, Christy, you could probably speak to that a little bit more. Sure, sure, happy to talk to that. So a few things. First of all, I mean, Barry talked a lot about consumer demand and consumer confidence. And I think not only for visitors, but for residents, right? And um, so businesses who look at those guidelines from the CDC, from uh, the governor's office, those guidelines and really focus in and adhere to those for their industry sector and also specifically for their business, you know, we'll, we'll probably see more consumers feeling confident to patronize their business. So what we're trying to do and many other partners like the CBB and others is, is cr help create that clarity, you know, um, communicate, bring in those speaker, speakers who can talk through, okay, the governor's plans, local, you know, encouraging those local uh, guidelines as well. You know, I, I was on the phone with um, Mayor Coppinger earlier. Our county has been working very closely with the governor's office, right? And so making sure that uh, businesses understand what those guidelines are for their specific type of business. And that's another reason for the hotline this week is, you know, hey, if you have some questions, if you're trying to navigate that, um, let us try to help you. The other part is assisting with PPE supply chains. So again, there've been a lot of conversations. I know, uh, as I mentioned earlier on our team, trying to source local PPEs, not only for the healthcare sector, but now for the broader community, and then connect uh, businesses with those distribution channels. So we think that's going to continue to be important as businesses start to figure out, okay, how much hand sanitizer do I need? What about my face masks? And, you know, candidly, as they open up, they might realize their projections were off and that they actually need more of those supplies. So I think a lot of it will be driven by awareness. And so that's where we, the CBB and others, are really um, going to partner to try to create as much awareness around where supplies can be located as possible. Um, but then also uh, helping businesses try to project what they will need. And then um, at the same time, again, connecting them uh, with those sources. So we think that's all going to be really critical as consumers then uh, will support businesses that they feel more comfortable in. And Barry, I don't know if you want to speak to how this would affect major attractions like the Tennessee Aquarium too, just the safety that's involved there. Yeah, I can uh, I definitely can definitely speak to that. And again, uh, most of the guy, you know, there are guidelines right now, mostly. But uh, what I've witnessed and seen, even so, so far, this is is that you're I think you might want to unmute or mute yourself and unmute again. Now. Yes, that's better. Okay, sorry. Um, but I think, um, yeah, small businesses, we've seen, you know, voluntarily just step up and say, look, our employees are going to wear masks. We want our guests to wear masks. And, and we need to 
we need to err on the side of caution. That's really the reality is we've got to do that. And I think our businesses are responsible to do that. If we fail in this first phase, it's going to set us back light years. It's going to, we're going to be starting over and we've got to make sure we get this first phase right. Our attractions right now are starting to discuss their reopening dates. We've had one reopen um, with the zoo, but the others are looking at opening and it's going to be several weeks, probably, um, you know, at the earliest, the first part of June, maybe even, and probably going into mid June, but every single one of them is creating uh, safe practices, opening uh, to smaller groups and just, just take the zoo, for example, everything is outside at the zoo. They've timed their entries. They have, uh, they're encouraging all the, all this safety equipment. It's one way in, one way out. So it's a loop. So everybody's traveling the same way. They've really taken a lot of precautions. And I'm seeing that and having regular conversations daily with our other attractions as they start to prepare their plans. Every single one of them is, is being responsible and, and, and trying to ensure both the safety of the guest and the safety of their teams. And Jay, as well, we also have this question in reference to this about if a restaurant does choose to reopen, but they also applied for these PPP loans or the, the Paycheck Protection Program, how does that affect their ability to get those if they choose to reopen? Uh, if they choose to reopen it, that would, that really wouldn't have much impact. As long as they can demonstrate and certify that they've been impacted and that pretty much everybody has, for those eight weeks, um, basically from May 1st to June 30th, that payroll will be forgiven and SBA is still gonna provide their final guidance and loan forgiveness. We're still waiting on that, but uh, opening back up, I, I, nobody's gonna be opening back up at 100%. They're gonna be able to still demonstrate impact. So we would highly encourage, that, that shouldn't come into play when they think about PPP. All right, wonderful. Um, and one of the another questions we got ahead of time here that I'll ask is um, what if uh, anything might set Chattanooga apart or be different from other cities in fighting this pandemic or in rebuilding the economy going forth? Um, I know you spoke a little bit, Christy, about the spirit of Chattanooga and how and Jay a little bit how well we were positioned before this all started. But did you want to elaborate on that as well? I might just say that it is still to me our resilient, you know, ecosystem that is built here in Chattanooga. It's in our DNA, coupled with, I mean, what we thought was a really aggressive Chattanooga Climbs economic development strategy uh, that we think will still really well position us. When we think about our geographic positioning, we think about, again, our 10 gig um, internet service. We think about, you know, again, all of the resources EPB has put in to our system. We have a more resilient network, which unfortunately was tested during the tornado. But you look at the speed with which, um, you know, we recovered from that from, a, from an energy standpoint. We're not recovered, don't get me wrong, but from a being back operational from an energy standpoint. Uh, those kinds of things I think will really help drive decision making in the future. We also think mid-market cities are going to be a great opportunity um, as supply chains start to think differently, um, as companies start to think differently. I mean, it was amazing to see nationwide, uh, nationwide choose to go all virtual. I think that announcement was yesterday. And so, you know, how that will impact business decision making and how markets like Chattanooga really will be well positioned in the future. And, but again, it all goes back to the way we work together, the resiliency that's in our DNA, um, and the, the focus around strategy and working together and having a real concise strategy coming out of this. I'd like to jump in real quick if I can, Allison. All good on sound? Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, so just looking back at some, uh, some data from a company called Destination An Destinations Analyst, they, uh, the top three activities uh, that are perceived safe by uh, potential travelers right now, number one is outdoor recreation. That's going to set us apart. That is what we are known for, uh, and we can deliver on it. The other is a road trip 
and the third is visiting friends and visiting friends and family. So we've talked about some of those, but that outdoor recreation is really going to help us uh, and differentiate us from a lot of our competition. Wonderful. All right. Well, we have actually hit 1245. Um, is there any last thoughts either of you had? Um, any last questions? You can throw them in the Q&A box. While we're waiting, let, let me just throw one other final question it, it, to maybe to part on or, or if there's not others, but what kind of recovery do you anticipate for pacing wise? I mean, there's been talk about a V-shaped recovery immediate, or is this a multi-year recovery? What, as you look in Chattanooga, uh, a lot of us are wondering how long of a downturn this is gonna be, how long of a uh, kind of a recovery we're gonna have, obviously looking into the unknown in the future, what are your expectations about the pace of people reopening the economy and, and coming back in a strong way? Go ahead, Christy. <laughs> Short straw. Well, um, you know, if, if we only had a crystal ball right now, Dave, I mean, that's the underlying question. And I think it's too difficult to say there are too many unknown factors out there um, with respect to COVID-19 and what it will look like. Um, from, so, so from our vantage point, we don't have the crystal ball on this but uh, we'll be doing everything we can and our ability uh, as your local chamber of commerce to make sure that we come out of this as strong as we can and ideally, you know, ahead of the pack. Um, but we do not have the crystal ball on timing. You know, obviously I shared some of the economic impact survey results uh, from you earlier, uh, with you earlier, and we'll continue to, um, to again, keep that information current as we move forward uh, and in terms of asking our members, how are you doing? You know, what kind of help do you need, et cetera. But uh, we do not have that answer right now, but just know we'll be doing everything in our power to most positively impact that and uniting with partners like the CBB, City, County, United Way, Community Foundation, all these organizations, our wonderful bank friends like Jay, who we will rely on to help us get out of this. Barry, you'd mentioned we, a lot of tourist attractions will not open for another month or so. What, going forth longer term, what are your expectations for recovery? Well, I'm glad Christy went first and she did a great job of, <laughs> of kind of providing a, a, a kind of vanilla answer. And, and as I would too, we do, she's right. We don't, have a, we don't have a crystal ball. We do have some, uh, in, our, in the hospitality and travel sector, we do, in industry, we do have some projections. Uh, airlines, I think, have, have said it's going to take about three years, um, and the hotels, uh, national hotels, uh, have also estimated maybe three years, and that is to get back to 2019 levels. So really, just to give some perspective, 2019 was the best year in travel that we've ever had. We were on track in 2020 to, to surpass that. So in order to get back to the levels we were in 2019, you know, we're thinking, um, if you wanted a shape, you said, is this a V? I would think it's more of a, a half round or a bathtub, if you will, maybe where it's gonna, we're, we're gonna cruise here for a few weeks, uh, kind of flat, but I think we'll start to see a turn uh, upward and then it will be you know, maybe over a period of, of about three years for the hospitality and travel industry. Jay, anything you wanna add? Yeah, originally I said it's kind of V-shaped, but you know, maybe more hockey stick. You know, the big unknown is the consumer behavior and their psychology. How confident are they to return to their normal spending habits? You know, consumers make up 75% of GDP. So really it's going to be tracking the data, the cases, hospitalizations, and what consumers do. And a lot in the Southeast, I'm no doctor, but the Southeast is fared much better than Northeast and some other areas of the country. So we're in a great geography that seems to be doing okay right now. And I'll add the markets have held up generally well. So the Dow, the stock market, the banks so far, from a financial standpoint, we're kind of weathering okay, but who knows how it's gonna go in two or three months. There's still a lot of uncertainty. Allison, anything you wanna add? Any more questions? Or I don't think so. We just got a couple of thank yous from everyone um, as well. So thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. Thank you, Barry, Christy, Jay. Appreciate it. Great comments. Be safe. Bye. Thanks, everybody.